All right, students, welcome to the notes on entropy. Don't forget, because this is a video, you can always pause the video, and if you need to take extra time to process or think of something, or you can rewind the video if you need to go back and review any of the materials that we've covered. Let's get started. We'll start with the essential question. Please write this at the top of your page in a colored pen. How can we predict entropy? This is the focus question, so be thinking about this question as we go throughout this unit, or as we go throughout this page. To start talking about entropy, we need to talk about the th second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics says that the entropy of the universe tends to a maximum. It's a very simple sentence, so I'm going to complicate a little bit more by giving you a little bit longer of a sentence. It's saying the same thing, but I like the second sentence a little bit better. It says, in a spontaneous process, the entropy of the universe is increased. And so we got to look at two words here. First, spontaneous process. The second one is entropy. So what are those two things? And how do they deal with the second law of thermodynamics? So spontaneous process. A spontaneous process is a process that occurs without any outside intervention. Now, what we mean by that is it happens naturally. You don't need to do anything to it to cause it to happen. For example, and these are non-chemistry related examples, they're, they're not really chemical reactions, but this example is a ball that rolls down a hill. If you have a ball that's sitting on a hill, quite naturally, it's going to roll down the hill. Gravity pulls it down naturally, or we say it's spontaneous. Water. Water freezes below zero degrees Celsius. If, if it was outside in the dead of winter below zero degrees Celsius and you put water outside, it will spontaneously freeze. Or, on the other hand, if the outside temperature was above zero degrees Celsius, it would spontaneously melt. If we want to get it to do the opposite, we would have to put energy into it to do the opposite. For example, if we wanted water to freeze and it was warm outside, we would have to put energy and we would have to go and take it to a freezer. If we wanted something to melt and it was cold outside, we would have to put energy into it like a flame to get it to melt. Wood burning. This one's kind of awesome, the fact that if we light wood on fire, if we start the process of burning wood, the wood will just spontaneously keep burning. It will keep burning and burning and burning until it's all gone. That is a spontaneous process. Iron rusting is another example. If we took iron, put it outside, and the moisture got to it, iron will spontaneously rust. Same thing, again, this is another non-chemistry example, but a book falling. If you have to put energy to bring a book up in the air, so putting energy is non-spontaneous is, is non -spontaneous if I had to bring a book and put it up in the air. But if I let the book go, it will spontaneously fall. Here's kind of my last example. Here we have this flask, this enclosed flask with a stopcock in it and gas on one side. If we were to open that stopcock, we know that naturally or spontaneously that gas will fill up both sides of the flask. The opposite is not true. We cannot spontaneously bring the gas back to one side before closing the stopcock. The bottom or B just does not happen naturally. So how about entropy? Entropy is a new word, delta S. Delta S is entropy. It stands for a measure of the disorder of the system. So entropy is really just disorder. We measure it in joules per Kelvin. Now, if you have a positive delta S value, then you have more disorder. If you have a negative delta S value, then you have less disordered, or we say that's more ordered. But I like to stick to the word disorder. So entropy is related to the word disorder. It's a very simplified word for what entropy actually is, but that's the way we're going to think about it here in chem. So going back to our example with the flask, if we open the stopcock again, then we're going to get a positive delta S. It becomes more disordered. The opposite is more ordered or less disordered. So the bottom one is negative delta S. So we have an increase in entropy for A and a decrease in entropy for B. Now remember, A was a spontaneous process. And so that kind of goes with that first law of thermodynamics, or the second law of thermodynamics that says in spontaneous processes, the entropy of the universe increases. Don't confuse entropy and enthalpy. They are not the same thing. We previously talked about enthalpy, which is delta H, and that's the change in heat energy. In the opposite hand, we have entro entropy, which is delta S, or the disorder or randomness of a system. So make sure to get those words correct 
correctly. Be careful when you're saying them. Be careful what you're reading because they're two different things. Delta S or entropy is a constant, meaning we can actually look this value up on a table and every substance has a specific entropy. So when do we see entropy? How do we predict if entropy is happening? Well, we really see it in two main ways. One is when the is in the quantity of reactants to products when that changes, and the other one is when phases change. So let's take two, look at those two examples. So here's the first example: when the quantity of reactants to products change. In this one, we have an increase in entropy, and what's happening is is we're getting an increase in the number of particles or moles of particles. On the left side, N2O4, we only have one mole of that. There's only one particle there. But as we go through the reaction, we end up with two particles. That's increasing disorder. So we have an increase in entropy for this example. The opposite is true for a decrease in entropy. If we were to flip this arrow around and go from two moles to one mole, then we would have a decrease in entropy. Phase changes is another example, and in this case, we have an increase in entropy when we go from a solid to a liquid or a liquid to a gas. I really like this top box up here with this animation of particles. If you look at solids, solids are relatively ordered. They're very close together, and they just kind of wiggle and jiggle in place. But as we get more towards the right, here we have liquids that are a little bit more flowy, moving around each other. And if we go from a liquid to a gas, you can see a really big increase in the disorder of the system. So entropy increases going from a solid to a gas. Finally, let's talk about the third law of thermodynamics. The third law says that the entropy at zero Kelvin is where entropy is zero. If you have an entropy of zero, then you have absolute order. There's no disorder in the system. So what does it look like for a particle to be at zero degrees Kelvin? Well, let's go back to our example with the ice. If you remember, there's a high entropy when it's more heated. That's when the ice turns into a liquid and those particles are moving around quite a lot. And there's a low entropy when it's a solid. Now, if you look closely, the solid particles are very ordered. They're not, they're, they're moving a little bit. They're kind of wiggling and jiggling. So what happens when we get down to zero degrees Kelvin? Well, these particles stop wiggling and jiggling. They basically have zero entropy. They're perfect, they're like a perfect crystal, they're in a perfect shape, and they don't even move. There's no disorder. Now, is that possible? No, we will never have a system where the entropy is at zero. There is always a way, there is always a way for entropy to get in there. So that's why it says the entropy of the universe tends to a maximum. Everything we do contributes to an increase in disorder. Going back, if we were to try to get something near zero degrees Kelvin, and I believe scientists have tried very hard, there's always a way for energy and things like that to escape or get in there. There's always a way for entropy to increase. And, and so the entropy of the universe tends to a maximum. All right, that's all I have for notes. Good luck, guys.